This is Introduction to Fungi. There are five major groups of fungi, and they're separated between the groups that have a dikaryotic stage and those that do not. There are the chytrids, the zygote fungi, and the glomeromycete. The fungi that do not have a dikaryotic stage are the sac fungi and the club fungi. Fungi, even though they seem like they're plants, are actually more closely related to animals. They are not known for their mobility, although they take these little spores and they spread them out all over the world, making fungi super diverse and widespread. So the first group we're going to talk about is the chytrid. So the chytrid is the only fungi with flagellated cells. I so see. that means they swim around and you can find them in ponds and inside organisms. They are digestive and they are commonly found as parasites inside other animals like sheep guts and frogs. Zygote. Zygote fungi. Zygote fungi. Use zygospores during their sexual reproduction in which they have hyphae that cross over and spread spores. They can reproduce both sexually and asexually. The sexual reproduction happens when a plus and a minus hyphae meet. The whole process is first the hyphae meet, the plus and the minus, then the gametangia forms at the tips of the hyphae. Then you have a cytoplasmic fusion, nuclear fusion after that, where a young zygospore forms and then it becomes a diploid zygospore. Once a zygospore, it goes through meiosis and once again becomes haploid. And this is when it produces spores, which it can then disperse and make new mycelium, the zygote fungi. Related to zygote fungi are the microsporidians, which is a parasitic uh, kind of fungi. It's an intracellular parasite. and. It does not have any mitochondria, which is why it needs to rely on host cells to take ATP and make energy to live. And what they are, they're like these little circles with tubes on the end, and then when they find the host cell, they stick the tube in and then they shoot their spores inside to infect the host cells. And finally, in the zygofungi family, we have the glomeromycetes. Glomeromycetes are only found in plant roots. Similar to the microsporidians, they live inside uh, the organism. However, the difference is they, they share nutrients with the roots instead of sucking them out like the parasites. Oh well, figure it out. The next group is sac fungi. <laughs> sac fungi are the most diverse fungal group. They have both single celled and multi celled organisms which are either single or they're like cross hyphase. They have more than 32,000 named species. They produce both asexual spores and sexual spores. Um, the asexual spores are also called conidia, and the sexual spores are made in the asci, and they have both plus and minus ones, just like the zygote fungi. Are oh, the... oh, I got this. An example of sac fungi are truffles, not the chocolates, but the mushrooms. So truffles, give off this, um, give off a smell that smells just like boy pigs. And then people take girl pigs and they take them out into the ground to, to sniff. And then when they smell something that smells kind of like a mate, they dig it up and then you find a truffle, which is super expensive and cool. Next are the club fungi. Club fungi. Club fungi, uh, also called basidiomycetes. And club fungi are the the biggest and the most complex fruiting bodies, which are, yeah, you said it. Those are also called basidiocarp. Club fungi are decomposers like mushrooms. They break down nutrients. Most of their organism is uh, roots that are underground, but you can see them when they reproduce, when they make the mushrooms that are very common. The mushrooms are their fruiting bodies, so that's where the spores come from. And it goes through a stage similar to the zygote fungi. But club fungi are also edible, some are poisonous. Uh. Typically, a dikaryotic mycelium dominates the life cycle, so most yeah, of the time the it looks like the roots. Fungal symbi symbionts. 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 Fungal yeah. symbionts. So these are fungi that form associations with plants and single-celled photosynthetic species. There are three different kinds. 
first one is a lichen, symbiotic interaction between sac fungus and photoautotroph. You can easily find lichens on trees and plants. They're, they look like moss. They form, yeah, they form a symbiotic relationship with the plants. It doesn't harm it, they live in harmony. Which is called mutualism, <laughs> which is a symbiotic interaction that benefits both partners. The next group are the fungal endophytes. Uh, sac fungi that reside in leaves and stems of the mass majority of plants. Or it can release different chemicals inside the plant that deter herbivore. This group are the mycorrhizae, uh, fungus roots. They form a dense net around roots that don't penetrate them. Hyphae of both kinds of mycorrhizae grow through the soil and functionally increase the absorptive surface area of their partner, so they help each other. They're better at growing between soil than even the smallest of plant roots, which means that they can fit in between all the other bigger roots, and they can concentrate nutrients where the plant can't, and they can share them. This is a beneficial trait for both of them, and many plants do pretty poorly without my corset helping them out. Other uses besides shrooms would be in medicine, and in food, like making bread rise and beer bubble. It's also used in agriculture as a pesticide or herbicide. And finally, we use it in food. I don't know <laughs> said food! <laughs> Matthias, why was the mushroom invited to the party? Why, Kim? Because he was a fun guy. Why did the fun guy leave the party? Why? Forgetting the first one. <laughs> <laughs> because there wasn't much room. <laughs> okay, thank you for watching. I'll see you in class. Hi, Dr. Brakeman. Goodbye. Bye.